we are going to talk about the types of friends you should not keep around. So we're going to start with the friend of me because I feel like this is a big one. I feel like people do not pay attention to this individual and they are detrimental because the friend of me is the one who acts like they're your friend. And you might even think y'all are close. Why is that? Because they're around quite often. They're the ones, you know, that you see throughout the day. You might text a little frequently. You might hang with them when the weekend comes. And if you guys grew up together, then those are the ones you sat with in the cafeteria. Those are the ones you might hung with after school. You know, that's because that's what you were accustomed to. You don't know how they came there. You probably don't even recall how you guys met. However, those are the ones that are kind of questionable and the way you can look at that is the way they entered your life because the ones who are frenemies for sure enter your life through competition and through really what you want to say referrals so yeah and they're the ones who really smile on your face but they really want to be in your place why because they like what you're doing and they don't like the fact that you're the one that's doing it so they got to figure out how can i get ahead of this person yes i got them thinking i'm their friend but really i'm trying to beat them those are the ones you gotta watch out for and they're around frequently you know like you see them again like you are with them quite often especially if you guys grew up together so that's one of the people that you are always used to and accustomed to being around however if you ever notice and you gotta pay real good attention to who your friends are because they're around frequently yes yes they are however you gotta check their types of energy when they're around because like if you guys are just hanging out chilling kicking it you know they might give off a decent a decent vibe to where you're not paying too much attention but what you really want to pay attention to is when you're down bad when you're really going through some stuff and you want to see if they're like kind of hype you know a little energetic like oh man dang you're down oh mm, dang that's that's crazy like hmm why are you so, you know, kind of, you seem like you're contempt. Like, you seem like you're getting a good feeling off of that. Like, the, the frenemies, they really get their, their energy off of you not having any. And this is why you got to keep them from around you. Because they're really trying to figure out how can they drain that life out of you. And the way they do it is, like, when you are down bad, those are the ones who try to really make that vivid. Where it's like, dang, oh, man, you lost your money. Oh, well, like, you can't do anything. You're not going to grow too much in life. But there's other things that you can do, you know, outside of what you're trying to do. You know, like they, try to, they try to compact a lot of hypeness into these, what would you say, misconstrued, misconstrued thoughts. Basically trying to make your mentality seem like it shouldn't be too upset, even though deep down you know that you're upset and you've got to do better. But they're going to try to make it seem like, oh, it's not too bad. Don't worry about it. Yeah, you're, you're going to do good. However, it's very sarcastic, whereas, like, if you can't really see through that, you really got to pay attention to that. If you can't really see through that, then that's just giving them ammo and the energy to continue to do it. So whenever you're feeling upset and you're down, they're the ones who are really going to be there to make sure you kind of stay down. But because you think that they're your friend because they're there frequently, you're going to be like, oh, well, okay, well, maybe they got my best interest. They do not. Do not. Do not get that confused. And they're like slowly, they're slowly but surely trying to copy you. You don't see it at first, but this is something you really got to pay attention to. Because this is how a lot of the frenemies enter your life, through competition. Because this is really where the competitor lies. Like there's two types of friends in terms of competition. There's the one who tries to better, the, better you, right? Then it's the one who tries to, to be better than you. And those are the ones you got to pay attention to because the ones who are trying to be better than you aren't trying to make you better. They're really digging you in a hole. You know, they're the ones who make you when you're older, try to spend a thousand dollars, two thousand dollars in a night trying to pop bottles and have tables and stuff like those are the ones who try to compete with you. And they are actually they're harming you because you don't see it then. But when you go back home and you be get behind closed doors and you like, what did I just do? Why did I do that? That's the competition in them within you. Because now they got you doing things that you normally wouldn't do because they're trying to be better than you. And the thing is, too, they're always trying to one-up you, and they're trying to do it publicly. 
again, a good friend is going to compete with you, but make it, you know, not so much public. Like, let's just say y'all are in the gym. Like, oh, yeah, I did 75 push-ups today. What you going to do? Now, I was like, oh, okay, you got 75? Oh, bet, I got 80. See, that's competition, but y'all are getting better in the process. Y'all are trying to make each other work and work harder. This person who's trying to be better than you, like, let's say you go get a brand new car. You, you know, worked hard for it. Let's just say you get something simple, like a nice new Chevy Impala, because most of you guys know what those are. Okay, great. And then guess what they go do? They go buy a BMW. Same year. Wow. That's one up of you. This is somebody who's just really trying to be better than you, and they're going to publicly do it. You do not want that person with you. And the thing is, it's hard to, it's hard to spot them. I'm not going to lie to you. But the more that you guys hang out, you got to compare how they act versus how your other friends act. And those, you know, honestly, you kind of got to get a third person's point of view because those are the ones who can give you real insight versus what you're saying. Because, like, when we look at things from our perspective, like, it's kind of hard to switch it because that's something we're accustomed to. But with someone else who's not in the friendship, gives you another you know point of view then it's, it's a little better because now you get to see you know two sides of it it's like oh okay i didn't see i didn't notice that they were doing that and another way that you can tell that this person was a friend of me is if a friend really like turns into an enemy you want to know why because that means that friend was never really your friend that person was an enemy in disguise and I don't know if you've ever seen this tweet or whatever where it said, I pray to God that my enemies disappear and I started losing friends. That's that's true. I don't know who made it and I probably butchered it, but it's on those lines. And the thing is, that's true because the ones who claim to be your friends are really your enemies, but they're going to get close to you. Like they say, keep your enemies closer and they're going to understand you. They're going to copy you or they're going to try to take from you in some form or fashion they're going to try to bring you down bad and you don't want that so one thing you have to do is to elim eliminate more frenemies you need to find the friends and look back into your past who were friends who turned into enemies and if you see anybody else in your current or in your future friends who are following the same line cut them off immediately there is nothing you need from that person. That person is going to give you a headache and they're going to be trouble. And do we like trouble? Nope, we barely like the board game because that game is kind of hard. You know how you almost get all the way around and then the, the green piece just, boop, pops you right up? Mm, right? Start back where you begin. And that's kind of like how it is with a friend of me. Like, as soon as you're getting around the board, you're, you're making your way and, boop, they just send you all the way back. And now you feel like you got to restart. So a friend of me. Get rid of them. The next type of person we're going that you don't want as a friend is the high schooler. Now, some of you guys may be in high school, some of you guys may be in middle school, but majority of the audience are, I would say, 18 and up, really about 20, 21 up, I would say. So the high schooler. This person gets mad <laughs> when you don't text them all day. Come on now. How old are we? We should. All being our 20s the majority of those who are listening but even still they get mad because you you can't text them all day it's like okay i got up at eight yes i didn't text you until 4 p.m yes and we didn't have a full conversation until 9 p.m okay and why do you need to text me all day like what is so important for me to hear your conversation like honestly if you think about it like if you text all day I don't need to talk to you later. Like, there's nothing to talk about. I know about your whole day. We went through the whole conversation. I know what you posted today. I gave you, like, a view and, what, six likes. Like, I just kept double liking, double tapping. I went through everything that you posted and just go ahead. Now, I didn't do it when you posted it because I got other things to do. However, I tried to make the attempt <laughs> to do so. But some people get mad when you don't text them, but they see you post. People got to understand, a post takes mm, four minutes to ten seconds. It depends on how long it takes you to type. I ain't going to lie, I'm a slow typer. This is why I usually just tap things and go. But a post doesn't take as long as me reading the message, thinking about what I want to say, thinking about how I'm going to say it, thinking about how you might interpret it so I can 
you know, type it correctly and then hit send and wait for it to circle to stop spinning for it to say delivered. And then I know that you got it. And you know what I hate when I send a message at 828 and they respond at 827. How are you texting me faster than I respond to you? Like, that doesn't make any sense. The high schoolers. Ugh, come on now. Like, we, have, we are grown. We don't have time just to sit and text all day. No. Go do something productive. Please get off your phone. Thank you. So, they're also the ones who will start an argument. They will lose that same argument and then expect you to be the one to come fix the problem. Come on, man. I'm not going to lie. When somebody's mad at me, they just be mad at me. Because, like, we can talk about it later. But in that instant, we might not talk for another, like, three or four weeks. Because if you're going to be that petty, I'm going to be mature enough to walk away. <laughs> like, I'm not really going. That's so irritating. I'm not going to be the one to try to help fix the situation when you're the one who started the situation. And your points were not valid. So now you're mad at the fact that you lost an argument that happens you know what you do you learn from it what do you learn from it don't start an argument <laughs> literally because well, you're just wasting time especially if somebody's trying to argue with me like my sister texts me with just random things and i feel like she just comes to argue you know how i kill her i kill her with oh man that's crazy or yeah i can see that oh yeah you're right you see anything that doesn't allow them to really send the next message especially if you just send okay that's cool or, hmm, interesting. They don't have too much to go off of that. So they send the messages, and guess what? They're arguing with themselves. After a minute, they're going to realize that, oh, well, I guess I think I still lost because I don't have anything to go with it. If you're going to start an argument, come with a valid point because then, again, you're just wasting your time and you're wasting my energy because now one thing I hate, especially through text, is bzz, bzz, like you ever just want to throw your phone because you're getting multiple messages about nothing like if i wanted multiple messages about nothing i would just sign up for all of these subscriptions to like what victoria's secret and amazon at least maybe i get a good promo i can gift somebody something like <laughs> i don't want to be nagged also they get mad when they don't get invited everywhere first off you can't go everywhere with me that is a fact because hey you don't know where i'm going that's one thing i do hate like i don't know if you guys have been through the same thing but you ever get a message or get cussed out because you tell somebody oh yeah i'm about to head out oh yeah bro i'm coming where am i going you don't even know where i'm going i can be going to an alley to go get in like some type of bar fight literally a bar outside <laughs> in the cut and you don't know that but just because I said I'm going to go do something, now you want to invite yourself. No. No. Literally, I shut all my friends down when I tell them, oh, yeah, I'll be back at a certain time. Oh, yeah, I'm about to head out. Oh, I'm about to go move around. And they're like, oh, yeah, I'm about to come. Oh, yeah, where are, we, where are we going? If you can't tell me where are we going, then guess what? You can't go. You got to stay home or you got to find something else to do. That's something you got to get out the mindset of. Like, if you're not invited to an event, don't try to invite yourself to an event. There's a reason why you were not invited because either you didn't fit that background or you got invited, but they weren't invited. So you can't invite them because they were not invited. So also don't feel bad if your friend didn't get invited to something. Like if another person it did not invite them, then it's probably for a reason. So those who get mad at <laughs> not being able to be invited to events, then you know what? Just don't worry about it. You know, we're grown. We're, we're mature. Those people need to get out their feelings, and that's honestly all we can say about that. Also, the ones who get mad at you because they are not friends with someone else, but you still are. So those are the ones, again, high schoolers. You can't tell me that I got to stop being friends with my friend because you are not friends with that person. What they got to do with me? What they say, uh, my name is Paul, and that's up to y'all, and my name is Bennett, I'm not in it. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> that's basically what it is. Like, don't include me into y'all petty beef, especially if it's, oh, if it's some little stuff that is so petty, then yeah, I'm definitely not getting involved. But even if it's some big things, like, unless that friend is completely wrong in what they did, I'm not going to cut them off or stop communicating with them because you have a problem with them. 
that has absolutely nothing to do with me. You guys have an issue, you can resolve it or you can stop talking. Be mature about it. You're not going to tell me that I need to stop being friends with them because you don't like them. And you're not going to stop being friends with me because I am friends with them. Like, they might be a terrible friend to you, but they're my best friend. So we got a, we got a bond. We got a great relationship. Like, again, that has nothing to do with me. But for you to have an attitude with me, then guess what, guys? We're going to cut them off. <laughs> We're going to cut them off first. We're going to be mature about it. We're going to talk about it because we're grown. We're adults. We have growth, you know. But if they are the ones who do not really want to talk or they're mad at you because they see that you still communicate with them, then this is what we do. We take the first step. We always communicate first. We initiate. We don't want to do it sometimes. It's okay. It's okay. You want to know why? Because, again, we're the mature ones. So we're going to take that first step and say, hey, you know, what's the issue? What's the problem? This is still my friend. What you guys go through has nothing to do with me. And you guys can sort this out so we can all be a group again. Now, again, if they don't want to, you know, really accompany that, then guess what? Snippity snip. Because that has nothing to do with you. <laughs> so the next type that we're going to get into, dynamite. These are the people that explode. And what I mean by that is... It's hard to keep them calm. Like, when they're upset, they explode. That's why they get the name Dynamite. And it can be verbally, physically, or through social media. So verbally, they're the ones, when they're mad, they say things that are very hurtful and rude. And the negative thing about that is that, well, it's hurtful and rude. But the positive thing about that is you get to see how they really feel. So if they really, you know, aren't really a fan of you, they don't really like you, or they don't like somebody else... You get to hear that. And it's just like, oh, okay. Hmm. This is this is how you really feel. Let me get some apple juice. Let me sip to this. You know, like you're really you really get to see how they really think. And you don't really want that, because especially not in public. Because that can be an issue. The physical ones. These are the ones who can't help but to punch stuff and throw stuff. You don't really want to make Instagram <laughs> because your friend went and, you know punched somebody or maybe they mad that their stimmy couldn't pay for the McFlurry machine and <laughs> now they're throwing all the McDonald's food on the floor like they're the ones who have these tempers and especially like my shorter people they try to call it like short people syndrome or you know where they feel like they have to explode because they are undersized and honestly I call that BS but it's something that Quite a bit of them have, I guess, or they claim they do. I got a lot of friends who say, oh, yeah, I'm short. I feel intimidated by a lot of people, so my only, you know, explanation is to blow up. Again, you don't want to be around this person because you don't know what goes off. And especially if they have a very short temper and they're very timid, ooh, yeah, no. Because, again, you will (laughs) be at the mercy of whatever goes on after that. And then lastly of the dynamite category is social media. And this person, they're posting books. Oh, my goodness. You ever see one of your friends post, like, a super, woof, like, it's like six stanzas <laughs> all into one page. And they got it, like, they got it squeezed down. So some font, you it's hard to see. Like, you really got to, like, bring a magnifying glass out to see. You don't really want those people because those are the ones who are literally just spazzing on social media for no reason. And they also usually start talking trash about people, and that's not okay. Like, we do not do bullying in any form or fashion. And just because that person is mad does not give them the right to start acting that way. So, the social media person, they are the ones who just start posting anything, everything, how they're feeling, things they weren't supposed to about other people. So, again, you get to see what they really know and how they really feel. Stay away from them. And then lastly, you got the depreciator. So, this one says... I got a great quote if you didn't hear the song. Fabulous said, never value the length of the relationship, never, over the strength of the relationship. I said, oh, yeah, he right. Because a lot of us try to hold on to these, these friendships because they're tenured. And we like that title where it's like, oh, my goodness, I got a friend that's, you know, we've been rocking since for a decade. I've been with them since the sandbox. You know, like we met when we were five years old. 
this was person my mom's friend so i met them when i were two we like to have that that tenure we like that title because to other people and to ourselves a little bit like it shows loyalty where it's like ooh, you know i've been down with this person they've been down with me so we're good however if you haven't known by now however is my my key <laughs> i don't know why i keep doing it it's just a habit but they're the ones like this friendship has been going down literally honestly there you it's probably hard to tell but in a lot of times it happens either in high school or college or really in that that mix right after high school where it's like new friends get involved new opportunities get involved so you guys kind of branch away and, it, and it's a gradual branch but you you don't really notice it but y'all stay y'all try to stay in contact and hang out because that's what y'all were used to and y'all feel like if y'all don't then there's something been wrong but there's nothing wrong with that because again people really do grow apart you know our wants change our needs change our goals change and it's hard to really you really keep a grasp of that don't hold on to something if it hurts holding on to it like if y'all ever seen the picture of holding on to a rope and it's constricting your hand it's cutting off your circulation and it hurts that is how holding on to a friendship that has no value like you both you guys are unhappy and y'all feel like the relationship is under or unvalued gen in general and again trying to keep that title isn't worth being unhappy but again a lot of us we kind of get locked in that mentality where where especially when our you know our family's been involved where it's like hey have you talked to such and such and it's like dang i ain't talked to them in like pshew, two and a half weeks you know what maybe i should hit them up that's because you got other outside voices where it's like, hey, have you talked to such and such? Hey, have you guys hung out? Where it's like, mm, I haven't. I ain't even thought about them. But maybe I should. If the relationship has been depreciating, you have to let it go. There's nothing wrong with that. We can't control, you know, life for real. We all have different goals. Sometimes we all have different opportunities. And if it's just something that we have to take, then that happens. There's no bad blood, but we weren't just grew apart. So to recap, what we have is the frenemy. This is the one you need to understand that they're trying to compete with you. They might even try to copy you. Their overall goal is to be better than you or to make sure you're in the mud. Pay attention to the ones who exit quickly or seems to try to compete with you on a, just try to be better than you on that type of level. You got the high schooler. These are the ones who get mad at little things that honestly at times have nothing to do with you again we are grown we have our lives sometimes we can't answer our phones them having beef with another person has nothing to do with me but they're mad at you cut it we're grown we're mature now dynamite these are ones who have like short tempers or big tempers however you want to call it they're the ones who have these explosions whether it's verbal physically or on social media where they will just lash out and it's not good for anybody in the tracks because again they are very hurtful and then finally you got the depreciator and this is the one where you guys have a long tenure but you need to let it go because again this relationship this friendship has been going downward for a decent amount of time because it's been so long and it's been gradual you haven't really paid attention to it except that they haven't been around for real so this is one that again you don't want to but you gotta cut the tie a little bit especially if you guys are unhappy and again, there's nothing wrong with that. No one's unhappy and no one's getting...